he inclined the heavens and came down. With dark clouds under his feet, he mounted a cherubim and flew borne on the wings of the wind. And he made darkness the cloak about him, dark misty rain clouds his wrath. Well, if you were studying that second chapter of Clement's book, uh, The Roots of uh, Christian Mysticism, uh, it's very, very clear that God is in total darkness as far as we are concerned. Uh, we cannot know him directly. We cannot know his being, we cannot know his essence, we cannot know really who he is. He is total mystery. And I can tell you, I have never uh, seen a chapter as packed as that chapter on God and our knowledge of God and our understanding of God uh, as in this uh, Clemens book. Uh, I don't know if any of you really got a chance to get into it, but I'm sure you will agree with me that it is, uh, you can't just read it once. You have to read it over and over. Uh, yeah, I spent the whole month uh, trying to, 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 to grasp it. You can think of yourself as, uh, remember at Halloween we used to have the a big uh, bucket with an apple, and you try to duck for that apple. Well, to try to get a hold, uh, just to find yourself uh, in total incomprehension, and trying to say what he, to, to find what he's saying. Um, yeah, it is mystery, and God is so beyond. Now, of course, he's quoting the fathers of the church, and uh, you have to admit that it's absolutely beautiful the way he describes God's total beyondness, that we can't reach it, we can't grab a hold of it, we can't control it. We're like, as he says, as, as, as Irenaeus says, we're like a snail in its shell. And within that shell, we create God. And we create God using words that, the, that, that are our image. And we, 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 we uh, make up this, this being who is nothing to do has nothing to do with, with God as God is. We create him to our image. And it is so, uh, so false and so beyond uh, that it is, um, yeah, you're, you're, you're speechless. So, he comes up with the conclusion that the only thing we can really do is just be in wonder and just uh, just open our mouths and ah, 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 as um, uh, the prophet uh, said, I cannot speak for the people, I can only say ah, ah, ah. Well, before God, that's all we can do, really. And this is the root of contemplation. Contemplation is being in the presence and speechless. Now, I've been quoting John of the Cross for the last 50 years, and um, he certainly says it. We can gather from what has been said 
that to, to be prepared for this divine union, the intellect must be cleansed and emptied of everything pertaining to sense. Divested and liberated of everything clearly intelligible, inwardly purified and silenced and supported by faith alone, which is the only proximate and proportionate means to union with God. For the likeness between faith and God is so close that there is no difference than between believing and seeing. In other words, when we are totally silent and totally empty of any thought or word uh, or understanding. It is in that moment that we can be in awe of who God is. Now it is only a moment and when we are in the moment we cannot be aware that we are in the moment. It is only upon reflection, after it is over. Now, St. Thomas Aquinas tells us in the very first question of the Summa Theologica, how can we know God? We can know God by uh, metaphors by analogy. In other words, we can say God is like this, but totally beyond that. St. Bonaventure says that God is love. God is the experience of love. One is in the head and the other is in the heart. And, 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 and uh, it, it's very clear from the two, uh, these two great saints and great theologians, uh, that they were looking at it from two different aspects. And uh, I, I, I believe that, that uh, we certainly know all our metaphors and our um, uh, analogies, and they are marvelous. But not one of them touches God directly. But the experience of love <coughs> comes as close as scripture tells us that who God is. And in love, uh, no one has ever seen love. No one can really describe love. Nobody can really uh, know love in its essence. But you can experience it. In other words, Contemplation is an experience. Mysticism is an experience. And that experience cannot be created by us. It is gift. And St. Teresa of Avila tells her nuns, as I've told you before, you can squirt up your, 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 your mind and your, and, your, and your face, you can do all kinds of distortions to try to make this happen but you cannot make it happen. It is gift. And it is a, a precious gift because God gives it whenever, to whomever, uh, he wishes. And uh, from what we can gather, uh, some people are not given the gift. <coughs> but when you... Um, you might say, specialize in the gift as a contemplative uh, monastery, a contemplative life. Now, in no way does that mean that, that just monks are the only ones that are contemplative. Uh, there are plenty of contemplatives uh, in, in this world, uh, but they don't know it. But when it becomes
becomes your profession, uh, the, 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 the church has come up with a document that we have a, an obligation, contemplative uh, monastery has an obligation to share that gift with others. The gift is not given just for yourself. The gift frequently is given for others. And uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, fathers of the church, the, 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 the hierarchy, they let us be here in a monastery, a uh, contemplative monastery, free from ministry so that we can have the, 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 the quiet and the time for this experience. Now, just recently, I saw on YouTube uh, what I think is a very, very tender and, and, and wonderful experience. Here was a little baby sitting against a wall, a little tiny child sitting there against a wall, with a puppy dog in front of the, the, the child. And the little child is looking at the dog, looking at the dog's eyes. And the dog is looking at the baby. And they're looking at each other very, very intently for quite some time. <coughs> now, the baby doesn't know. The baby isn't old enough to know and understand. And the dog doesn't know. The dog doesn't know what's, go what's going on. But yet, the dog's looking at the eyes of the baby, and the baby's looking at the eyes of the dog. How do they know to look at one another's eyes? I mean, just think about it. Who tells us, why, why doesn't the, the baby look at the dog's arm, or his tummy, or something? But he's looking right at the dog's eyes. Why does that happen? And what is going on between the two? Well, I think that we're very much like that puppy dog looking at God. Uh, we don't know what we're doing. We really don't know when we pray and when we, 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 uh, we contemplate. It's beyond knowing. It's beyond when our uh, knowing faculties aren't working. It's an experience, the experience of awe. And that, what's going on between those two is awe. Now, maybe it's not, you know, it's not a perfect example, but it just struck me so much. That, uh, uh, yeah, we're like little puppies who really don't know what they're doing, but we're very much loved by this God he puts us here, he lets us sit here, and uh, we really don't know what's happening when we're praying, but he knows. He is looking at us intently. He understands what's going on, he understands the awe. And as we, we, when we're talking about the, uh, uh, the encyclical of Pope Francis, when he was talking about uh, being in awe with the leaf. He truly understands the contemplative uh, mystical experience. He says the awe that you and I experience looking at a leaf, it is the awe that is the contemplative experience that God put there for us. He created both the leaf and us. And he created the awe that we experience in looking at the leaf. And it is the awe, you might say, the no thing. God is no thing. He's not the leaf, and he's not us looking at the leaf. He is the awe in between, the nothingness the pure spirit that is between. And uh, Pope Francis said, that's the mystical experience. 
and that's what is the root of uh, uh, of, 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 of mysticism. The root of Christian mysticism is this awe that God gives us for a moment in prayer. Now, it, 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 is, uh, it takes a while to quiet ourselves, you might say, uh, to uh, experience this quiet, this awe for a moment, to be gazing. There was a, some of the, the writers in the uh, 19th century talked about the prayer of simple regard, the prayer of simple regard, to be just looking at God in simple regard, just looking, uh, looking at the tabernacle, looking at the crucifix, uh, holding the rosary. Uh, uh, these are all uh, experiences. It's, it's not a mental uh, activity, it's the experience, the experience of uh, this awe that exists between us and God. And the, 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 uh, when it's between persons, then it can be very, very uh, beautifully defined as love. The love between a mother and the baby. Uh, nobody sees that love. Nobody, the baby certainly doesn't know what it's all about. Yet it's love, it love exists there. And that baby knows uh, that, that mother uh, is, is, is there. And he uh, uh, tried to take that baby away. And there's war. Uh, yeah. Well, this is what Clement is talking about in this second chapter. Uh, but it's very, it's, 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 it's a new way of, of uh, hearing it. It's a very, very theological, and it's very, very uh, uh, beautiful, the way the fathers of the church, especially uh, Irenaeus, uh, Dionysius, um, the very, very early fathers. It's absolutely magnificent. I, I don't know... If, is anybody in agreement with me that, that, that Clement is really, uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's magnificent. Uh, and it certainly was new for me for some reason. You know, I've been studying this for, 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 for years. And, uh, but I don't think I really, I was holding on to something. I was holding on to my own concepts and my own ideas of what uh, contemplation is. And uh, but Clement goes beyond all of that. Uh, it's totally, totally, infinitely beyond. And uh, I don't know if I ever really understood or even had a glimpse of how unknowable uh, the reality of God is. Uh, yeah, we are in our little uh, shell, and uh, we, we create this image, and it can be holding on to the images that we had for years and years. But once we've got an image, immediately we don't have it. You have to let go of every single image you have, and just be in awe. Yeah, I guess that, that it, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty hard to put into words what, what Clement is saying. And, uh, uh, but I, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, look at it. I think it, 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 it's, it's like very, very heavy, thick fruitcake. You can't eat much of it at a time. Just a little tiny bit. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's very, very difficult to get your, your, your teeth into it. Uh, but if you take your time and, and, and just can over and over and over, uh, you, you will enjoy it.